Hello everyone, welcome back to my studio. Today I decided to paint um, a wine glass with cheese and uh, hopefully I can again do this video with um, a little editing where I can show what I'm painting so for convenience. And I also put my palette on site, not sure if it will show well, but it's a glass palette, it's not wood palette. So we'll see how it goes. So I also did some preliminary drawing, very, very basic one. So let's get started. So for my glass mixture, it will be a kind of gray mixture. I'm going to use some burnt sienna or it could be transparent red oxide. It's just, I happen to have burnt sienna and I'm a little bit thinning it. So it would be a thin mixture to start from. So that's for the contour of my glass I used. And I think it's a little bit too dark actually. So it's just to reemphasize the drawing a little and where I see the darkest part. So I'm adding a little bit more blue and a little bit more white kind of grayish and my background is actually very very light olive color so maybe I will do a little bit of that I'm using yellow ochre and black and some green for that purpose just to see how it goes the back yeah it's a little bit dark in this area so I may add it a little Add a little bit more of yellow ochre and a little bit of white. So it tells just it doesn't matter the color, it's just as long as I get the value right for this one. So I could see how it will look. So it's kind of grayish. I should leave some space for the wine here. So I'm painting over here as well because this guy glass is very transparent and I will be adding darker accents as I go. So I'm kind of blocking it very roughly. Do it a little bit thinner. More light on the left because that's where my light comes from the window. And then a little bit darker in the other area down here so I'm kind of scrubbing in a little bit actually here it's a little bit warmer so I'm adding a little bit of brown it's my cheese so it was a piece of gouda I took from my on stock <laughs> virtually off the table because I tried other cheese and didn't work so so this is a little light as well so I'm doing background because then it will be easier for me to judge the value of the glass like here in the glass in the top it's very very uh, similar to background color. So I'm squinting and putting a little bit darker gray here for now because I might change it later. So my wine is red so it's going to be very dark. Then I'll do tabletop very quickly, just indication. And it has a little bit of blue in the tabletop as well, because it's kind of gray um, wood. So I should not forget my cast shadows. There are two olives here as well. 
So the cheese is the base color is yellow and olives is um, green. So I'm going to do cast shadows. I'm using a little bit of actually I'm not using my palette. I forgot about it, but that's okay. I'm using a little bit of uh, burnt sienna and blue just to indicate cast shadows. I know that I'm exaggerating them a little bit right now, but it's easier to do darker now and then make lighter when I need to. So this is cast shadow from the cheese. So I did my cast shadows and I did my main values shapes on the background and tabletop and I'm going to do clean my brush a little bit I'll do ultramarine blue and alizarine crimson and tiny bit of black because that wine is really really dark red color and I'm trying to look at the how the shape of this ellipse, ellipse curves it should be equal for top of the glass for the this area at the top this area in the middle and this area at the very bottom so I may do as well because I did tabletop I might as well do the this glass stand the base of the glass sorry okay so this is the base color of the glass of the wine and I know that I will be changing it when I take my other brush a little more will be light in some areas and dark in the other areas. I always like to, to track the change of the color. So this is just an initial very very basic color block so I would know. And actually I added a tiny bit of pink here so I would know where to go from here. And now I'll do very base color of cheese again. It's easy to go with the base color and then go from there. So I'm using yellow ochre, tiny bit of white and some of that red. So if I squint that's I think the right color. So there is a little bit of like kind of brown greenish in this color, even gray. So I'm going to because it has some cumin seeds in it. <laughs> so I'm going to do that gray color at the bottom. And it's much lighter on top. So I'll do tops are always lighter. I do this. And again I'm only doing indications. I'll come back to it later. Just want to see. So that my cheese and for olives I'm using a mixture of um, they're quite green quite nice bright color with a little bit of I think um, a little bit of brown them so that's my first olive my second olive and I do of course shadows for them and all other things as soon as I take a different brush. So I did this with a bristle brush so now I will go with a slightly smaller brush and try to do all the extra things I need to do <laughs> with my wine glass. And So because I have kind of mix of sun and cloud in the window I'm not sure I have a tiny bit of
sun, tiny bit of sky. That's not the right color. So I'm going to mix some kind of blue purple color. Try not to make it very bright. So I think this is going to be that's color. So that's where the sky color comes from. I'm going to do this ellipse like this. So flat brushes are convenient for doing ellipses or round shapes. So there is some light over there. So now I need to go through here. And through here. So I think I think this is not quite the right. So I'm trying to squint. The glass is so thin that really it's only indications where it finishes and where it starts. and the background around it as well. I'm using the mixtures that I pre-mixed originally, just adding more paint to it. I'm trying to paint around the glass so it's easier sometimes to carve the shape around especially if you want to get like correct geometrical shape. And I'm going to use some darker areas, just indicate where is the rim of the gloss. If you <laughs> ever look at Sargent paintings, how he painted gloss, you don't actually see the rims he just puts little highlights here and there and the gloss is done so I guess that's how genius do it <laughs> so it's always worth trying so I'll paint around it again here And again, my highlight is slightly yellowish here, and the reason why it's because um, that sun comes in, and at the same time, I have sky. So I have kind of interesting situation here. It's both um, light from the sun and light from the sky, and I'm trying not to follow the rule of what I know, like if it's cool, it has to be warm shadows, or if it's warm light, it has to be cool shadows, or and say opposite for highlights. I'm just trying to follow what I see, and sometimes your gl your eye shows more and proves right rather than just painting what you know. So. And just go from what I see, see what happens. So this a little bit here. So I step back and look at it, and so far it looks okay. Need to wash my brush again and add a little bit more background color around here. And of course, <laughs> it's what happens. So now I need to correct my shape of the glass. And like I said, I'm not that great with some geometrical forms sometimes. 
I always put it as a mirror or check it on my phone after. This way it's easier to see sometimes. So I'm going to use a slightly darker color here at the base of the wine glass. And also because the base of the wine glass is on the table, it of course um, catches more light on the tabletop, but at the same time it has some very dark areas at the base over here and at the back over there. I'm not putting all highlights yet. Actually, I'm not putting any highlights because first I'm trying to use some yellow air. I'm trying to get the shape right and then see if I need many highlights or not many highlights. Like I can see the one that goes through a very this one and this one through the very um, top of the glass. Let me put that one, but only indication. Like there are so many colors I see in the glass. So I'm trying to kind of watch where the color falls so where the light falls and where the main so I have I see the main highlight here and there are like tiny ones here the main thing not to overdo with highlights especially on a glass like this so I'm trying to put the one that is yellow one at the back There are more gray blue ones. Over there. So as you can see, I'm doing a very, very light indication, but not really painting the shape all the way around, like contours and everything. My purpose of this painting is to catch the light and the color and not try to like make a perfect, super perfect glass. So even though I have to keep it kind of right shape so we created illusion of light passing through um, trying to squint a little and see where I got my shape of the glass wrong I mean geometrical shape in this case and where I need to do some tiny corrections Tell the truth, um, for the purpose of the video, I may not go back and forth on it because I want to keep it short and everyone can do a drawing if you like focus and do correct drawing and double check what you got wrong. The main thing is to get highlights, light, and for my highlights I'm using mixture of white with a touch of blue or mixture of white with touch of tiny bit of cadmium yellow dip so there's tiny bit here there's tiny bit here there is some of the base here
and it's difficult to put the highlight with this brush. I'm just looking where I can improve the shape. I'm trying to add more distinct highlights when needed. But like I said, not too many. So there's a highlight here. darker here where it curls the base of the glass. So I'm using that gray color I had from before. Also I'm correcting it with tabletop. It kind of goes like this. I don't spend too much time because it's um, um, on, on the base because it kind of goes in space. So I need to do a sharper edge in front of this base, but the other part goes more in space. So I'm just thinking some reflected light in this glass would be nice, nice purple, not too much. That's where I see it. Some reflected lights here. The main thing with reflected light is just not too light and not overdo it because then your shape will be gone. Actually, I liked it better without reflected light too much because I'm starting losing my shape. And that's what I don't like. Sometimes you have to sacrifice some things, and plus, you can exercise your artistics license and voice so I'm going to go back and do that dark part back where it was because it is very dark I'm going to go back with that black as well black and uh, lizarin sometimes have a good combination so I think I'll leave glass for now maybe shape is not perfect but I'll go back to cheese now I'm using cadmium yellow deep and and yellow ochre. So adding a little bit of lighter at the top here where I can see it. This is the rind. Using a little bit kind of darker color, greenish, brownish. <laughs> and uh, we should not forget about cast shadow under it. Otherwise it will be floating. Same as like a wine glass I did. So it's very light on top, so now I'm going with a really light color for the cheese, using more cadmium yellow, deep and white, and then more white, especially here in the middle, not too white. sides where I see it. Like I said, it kind of looked a little bit grayish, so I'm using even some 
gray color to add to it. To add more color. I may use that green mixture just to add a tiny bit of green. Because this part is quite dark on the cheese. shape of the cheese that I lost a tiny bit. Just uh, because it goes in perspective away from us. And the same here. Now I'll go to my olives. Olives are uh, not main characters in the show. <laughs> so I'm just going to indicate the latest parts. One olive even have a little um, highlight on it, but I'll just use this. So it's quite dark under shadow. Probably I should use a smaller brush in this case. Yeah. So I'm using um, Viridian and I think I used some... Oh, what it's called? Burn Sienna. I don't use Burn Sienna very often. I use um, transparent red oxide, but it doesn't really matter for this dark shadow from the olives. And then I use even a little bit of white and green and cadmium yellow deep for lighter parts of olives. cheeses in the shadow as well, just to fill that area. The painting with the paint I already put there. Maybe need to indicate tabletop a little at the back. So now I'm going to mix some nice green clean color from my old dry viridian. <laughs> because these olives are really like one, the first olive is really bright green. Then the problem when you add white, you lose a lot of color. So I'm trying to this color one olive is more cooler the other one is a little warmer so unfortunately to mix my viridian takes some time it's a little bit dry it's the old color to make this bright green color but not very 
bright. Maybe this will bring it up a little. Don't want to make very bright olives, but the other one is slightly yellow. So I'm using um, green, blue, and brown. I th I think yes. To do. A shadow in this olive to indicate more sh shape. Same for this one, the one that I lost. It's almost like green blue, but not completely. Mixing some yellow in that as well. And this is my mid tone, I think, closer. Yeah, now I have to go back and define the shape one more time. Unfortunately, I didn't prepare green color, and that was a big mistake. <laughs> so this olive does, doesn't have any highlights, and this olive has a tiny bit of highlight that I can just indicate in there. It's very subtle highlight. Trying to experiment here <laughs> with this olive to see if a little bit yellow brings it back, but no, it's I think cooler, cooler olive looks better. Maybe I will even add more cool to the other olive as well. I think this painting is almost done. Like olives can be done if I need to, but I don't need olives. I put olives just for the purpose of composition, just to add a little bit more color. So I think. I may leave it for now. There are little bit dots of scenes in the cheese, so I can do that. Just a little, not too much. I don't know if that shows anything or not. And also, I noticed there is a little bit lighter part. She's coming here. A little bit lighter. On top here. I'm just going to double check the glass again. So now I see that light changed slightly, and I can see this light streaming through the stem of the glass. I think when I go back and squint, my glass might be a tiny bit tilted, 
and I think I may take a photo and see which way I have to correct it a little. Maybe my board is a little bit out of balance the way I fixed it, but I think that gives indication of how wine glass can be painted. So I hope you learned something in this video. And if you have any questions, just send me questions. And I hope I will prepare some other videos soon with a new puppy in the family. I really don't have time, but I need to start making more time for my painting. So I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Bye.